Hello everyone, I hope you're doing uh, well, I hope you're staying safe uh, during this hurricane uh, as it kind of runs through us. Um, however, you know, since we are obviously not in class today, uh, I wanted to go ahead and sort of run through the next part, what we would be doing in class uh, if you came in. Uh, so quite literally, uh, when you came into class, uh, I'm expecting that this was done uh, because this is what we're going to talk about. If you had not done this, uh, I would have quite literally just told you to watch the video uh, effectively. So uh, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and start talking about some of the values inside of our sensitivity report. So one of the things that uh, you're noticing, at least up in this top region for now, is our final values. This 25 and this 50, if you notice, this was the value that Excel put into our normal in racing lawnmowers. So effectively, that's just uh, our changing function, right? That's, that is the same value. The same thing's going on with our objective coefficient. You see our 600 and our 800. Those are the same things as our profits. So uh, for my sake, I'm going to go ahead and highlight those as green. This is just sort of following our color scheme. But I want to focus in. We'll ignore reduced costs for now. We'll get into that uh, in a little bit, uh, or uh, in later semest uh, classes. What I want to focus in on, though, is the allowable increase and decrease values. You see, what these are referring to is, you know, what if I wanted to uh, make a little more money? What if I wanted to increase this cost? How much could I increase, say, my normal lawnmower uh, without breaking this entire model? Remember, we're, this entire approach using Solver and using linear uh, programming was to find the optimal uh, combination. What this is saying is to maintain uh, this model, I could increase my profits, I could increase the uh, profit of my racing lawnmower to 600 plus 200, dollars I could in increase it to 800 uh, before everything breaks. Uh, as soon as I do that, uh, we'll see that. Uh, so just to even see this in action for a second, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm increasing my profit, my normal lawnmowers, uh, to $799. That's literally how much I'm going to increase uh, this. If I ran through the solver one more time, what you'd notice is nothing changed. And that's actually what we're kind of identifying, is that I could increase uh, the selling price of my normal lawnmower up to $200 uh, and still have the same models. This it would still be the optimal configuration, and this is how much I would make. The second I increase this to eight hundred dollars, right? I want I you know I'm I'm jonesing for that extra dollar. Uh, the second I do that and I run through this entire process, I've broken my model. Uh, you see now it's just more optimal to you make normal lawnmowers because they take less labor hours and you know while you know tubing's just kind of part of it as well it's just better to do this so we don't you know want that obviously like when we're thinking about things maybe we have some constraints about uh, we need to make at least two racing lawnmowers or you know half the number of normal lawnmowers something you'll do in the next assignment so that's effectively again our uh, allowable increase we can make a max profit you can imagine the exact same thing happens with allowable decrease if I wanted to minimize profit for whatever reason, I, you know, cuz, um, you know, I wanted to not make as much money, uh, right? It would be instead the objective coefficient minus the allowable decrease. Now, for my sake, you know, I won't change this to a dollar sign amount, but this is still an indication. You know, I can uh, contain, I can still use my model if instead I put it at five. Uh, 34. $534 would be my selling point. I run the solver. Again, nothing changes uh, because even with all of these configurations, this is still the optimal uh, selling kind of value. Uh, this is the optimal amount to sell. Uh, so again, I'm going to just uh, cancel out of that and we'll bring it back to 600 The same thing happens, uh, as you can guess, with both 
uh, with the racing lawnmower and its allowable increase and decrease. Now, for my sake, I'm going to not type them out. I'm actually just going to highlight and use that tiny little square uh, to drag it down. If that didn't work, try it again, practice it a little bit, you know, you know learn some fun little Excel foo, if you will. Uh, so, with that kind of in mind, I'll go ahead and just give these a nice little highlight as well. Uh, for orange, and since we didn't do this for racing lawnmowers, go ahead, you know, do it, right? <laughs> what I want to focus in on, though, is now this bottom section, our constraints. So we see the same kind of concept. These are those final values that we ended up seeing here, 75, uh, 2,300. Same values going on, so I'm just going to go ahead and highlight those in blue. The one thing I want you to kind of realize is that you know, to maximize and find the optimal selling and optimal profit and whatnot. Uh, we used up all of our uh, engines, we used up all of our labor hours, but one of those interesting points is we had a limit of 3,000 uh, feet of tubing, right? That's too much. We actually have, t we're buying, if you think about this in the supply chain model, we're buying too much tubing. We're only using 1,300 tubing uh, to maximize profit. So if we're looking to cut costs somewhere, uh, this would be a great place to do that. Uh, we could actually reduce this down to uh, literally 1,500, you know, just a little slack for when we break it. Uh, and we'd still be perfectly fine. Uh, so that's one of those interesting points. We found a place to save money. Another point is these shadow costs. So the entire concept of a shadow cost, right, is what happens if I increase this by one? If I said that I am going to allow, you know, I'm going to open up another assembly line for creating engines, right? Uh, what would I, boom, what would uh, be my now optimal uh, profit? Uh, or change, what would change through this entire process? The shadow price is saying that if I increased my engines by one, I would make an increased profit of $200. And let's actually go ahead and see that. I, I'm going to go through, I'm going to run the solver. I've increased my constraint that I'm allowed to make one more engine. And we see exactly that. We see uh, this time I'm allowed now uh, $200 uh, additional profit, exactly like it said. Now, you can see increasing tubing doesn't do anything for us because, again, we have so much tubing left over, so, uh, you know, it's not going to help us. The one thing I want you to kind of look at is this labor hours. Now, it doesn't seem like much, right? You know, two, uh, $20 doesn't seem like much, and if I were to ask you which one you should increase, you'd say, oh, it's engines, obviously, we make more money. But what I want to kind of pose the question is, uh, should we make one more engine or hire one more person? reason why is because if we think about it, we hire a full-time person. They're going to be working 40 hours. That's a, a very key thing here. Uh, we're going to add one more person. They're working 40 hours uh, a week on creating these lawnmowers. Uh, what we're looking at is now, again, if we think about it, increasing by one gives us a profit of $20. If we hired someone and their job, 40-hour work week, uh, that's increasing now by 40 you know, I'm using air quotes uh, here, but units. Uh, 40 additional hours means 40 times 20. We should see an increase of $800. And just to see that, again, I'm going to go ahead and make our constraints again 75 here. And we're going to increase our limits now. Again, we've hired one more person. So we have an additional 40 hours of work week. Again, just increasing that engine, we got a 200 profit. If we hire someone instead, we hire a new person, we're going to get a profit of $800. So it's a, a fun little kind of idea of which variables should we be changing, which variables should we be fluctuating with. So the thing about it, uh, again, these are those same constraints that we were talking about. You see the 3,000 there. So uh, again, I'll just highlight those in red. We'll worry about the allowable increase and decrease later. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to black them out. Again, you know, things to think about.
but this is an interesting kind of point. Uh, so one of the things to think about if you're looking at this for, for you know prepping the exam, because uh, obviously this will be something on the exam. If I presented you with this sensitivity report, right? If I asked you what the max profit of a normal lawnmower or the min profit of a racing lawnmower uh, was, or how many engines were used uh, to create uh, our optimal profit, you know, every single one of these cells is something that you can expect to be asked. These are not, because that's why I blacked them out. Uh, reduced cost, same kind of thing. So. There. Um, everything that is not blacked out here is a cell that you should understand and recognize and be able to uh, answer in, a, in a, the exam. So once you've done this, again, if you were in class and you didn't even build uh, the sensitivity report, this is the first thing I would be asking you to do. Uh, you'd literally be watching uh, videos on Moodle in class. So definitely, you know, prep up. Uh, this is what we do in class and then all I would ask you to do is go on Moodle and this is your second assignment. Take what we've learned and now do it again. Apply it. But this time instead of working off of two lawnmowers we're gonna work off of four uh, shoes I guess. Uh, you know flats, heels, wedges, sandals. We're not making as much profit on one of them because again you know a lawnmower is expensive a flat is not. Uh, but we have the same thing. We have some constraints. 1,500 square feet of leather, 500 pounds of rubber, 500, uh, 200 pounds of cork. Uh, there are some additional constraints. Uh, you know, obviously uh, flats need two square feet and the same kind of process. These are, you know, this is the one engine and now uh, the 20 hours of uh, labor hours. We'll ignore labor hours for now. So the question is, you have to make at least 10 of them, and you have to make two flats for each set of heels. Now, the one thing I want you to think about is these two constraints here that I've added in, uh, don't worry about them for right now. You know, focus on getting your sensitivity report up and running. You know, you're doing an iterative process. Once you've got something that works off of here, then you can start to add these kind of extra little details in. And this is just something that you'd add to Solver. You need to make at least 10 of each. So this final value cell uh, greater than or equal to 10, right? Same c with each of these. The next question would be, now that you've built this model, some stuff. How many can we make? Uh, what happens when we change those constraints? What's our min profit and max profit? What can we uh, adjust with each one of these? So again, I hope you're all staying safe, uh, stay dry, um, and you know, I'll see you on Thursday.